Here, a woman is seen drinking Tsingtao beer, and then, after seeing an explosive news, she is completely unable to restrain herself and rushes to the bathroom to vomit. What could have caused such a severe reaction? This is because in China, there's a possibility that the beer you're drinking might contain urine. On October 19th, a netizen uploaded a video taken at the Tsingtao Beer Factory No. 3, which displayed a worker urinating into a vat of ingredients that appeared to be wheat. Judging by the worker's practiced motions, it wasn't the first time this had occurred. Recently, China has been associated with four so-called modern inventions. Tsingtao beer tainted with urine, old vat pickled vegetables contaminated with unsanitized feet, substandard Weltmeister vehicles by WM Motor, and incomplete Evergrande property developments. Tragically, many people have become entangled with these new inventions. Therefore, it has been jokingly said among the youth that drinking Tsingtao beer, eating old vat pickled vegetables, driving WM cars, and purchasing unfinished Evergrande properties epitomizes the four misfortunes of life. Let's delve into these four phenomena that are currently hot topics of discussion in Chinese society. Since the Tsingtao beer urination incident, Chinese netizens, especially beer enthusiasts, have been in uproar. In a video, a comment reads, A stream of urine has brought a brewery to its knees. They always say to drink less beer because it causes high uric acid. Now you know why, don't you? If it's the original flavor you're drinking, of course your uric acid levels are going to be high. Should I throw it away? It's pretty embarrassing, says another user, debating whether to discard the Tsingtao beer from the fridge, conflicted over the whole situation. Following the incident, Tsingtao Beer is said to have contacted the police the next day, leading to the arrest and detention of both the urinating worker and the videographer. According to mainland media reports, the worker, surnamed Cui, caused direct losses of over 3 million yuan, approximately $410,000. This figure does not include the drop in Tsingtao Beer's stock value. Mainland media states that the worker's actions constitute intentional property damage, which, given the substantial amount involved, could result in up to seven years of imprisonment. Astonishingly, rather than investigating Tsingtao beer, the public security authorities arrested and detained the videographer who exposed the incident. Does revealing the truth about food safety now equate to a crime? This indicates that the Chinese government still prioritizes public opinion and national image over food safety management, which is prioritizing political achievements over all else. In another clip, a restaurant owner expresses his discontent. After the incident with Tsingtao beer, I thought about our many years of partnership. Now, as it's the off-season for beer, I thought we might as well stick with it until the controversy blows over, but then I saw online that Tsingtao Beer's response was to detain the person who took the video. That is far too domineering. A state-owned company is still a state-owned company, but I can just stop using it, right? He states that he has terminated his cooperation with Tsingtao Beer. Nevertheless, numerous extreme nationalist and opportunistic merchants still support Tsingtao Beer despite the scandal. Here, someone remarks, I'd rather drink beer with urine in it, or even a glass of urine, doesn't matter to me, because Tsingtao beer remains a Chinese enterprise. As long as the business doesn't fail, I'd willingly drink a glass of beer with urine in it, even if it is all urine. Even some believe that this is a great opportunity for Tsingtao beer to grow and develop. A man in the electronics marketing industry claims in a video that this is a once-in-a-millennium opportunity, and seizing it could catapult the company to the top of the industry. He further states, whether a person is viewed positively or negatively, it signifies that they are popular, infamous or famous, they are still famous. Therefore, if Tsingtao Beer can capitalize on this wave, turning the crisis into an opportunity, then they can harness this wave of popularity, which is key to victory. It seems that, in the man's view, urinating in food products could bizarrely become a means to financial success. In fact, not everyone in China is a nationalist or opportunist. Some netizens comment, it's always those who uncover problems who are dealt with. It happens in every field, while others say, what is clearly an issue of food safety and hygiene is being turned by many into a conspiracy theory. Regardless, the fact remains that the Tsingtao beer urination incident has caused significant damage to the company's reputation and profits. 
According to media reports, after the stock market opened on October 23rd, Tsingtao Beer's stock price plummeted by 7.5%, evaporating 8.3 billion yuan, about 1.1 billion US dollars, in market value. With Tsingtao Beer's negative response, there might be more volatility in stock prices. Some netizens bluntly say, I will never drink Tsingtao Beer again. Your arrogance has cost you my business. Beyond the issue of beer adulterated with urine, another nauseating processing expose involved a type of sour-tasting food in China, pickled vegetables. An evening show on China's state broadcaster CCTV exposed unsanitary earth pit pickled vegetables, owned by five food enterprises, are providing processed pickled vegetables for well-known companies, including Master Kong's Old Vat Pickled Vegetable Instant Noodles. In a distressing video, heaps of pickled vegetables are seen being trampled by barefoot workers mixed with cigarette butts and other debris. A manager remarked that in China, if a product is of poor quality, such as being adulterated with leaves, the penalty would only be 1 to 2,000 yuan, about 136 to 273 US dollars. If such an incident occurred overseas, the fine would be at least 10,000 yuan, about 13,600 US dollars. This manager's comments indirectly reflect the inadequate enforcement of food safety regulations in China. Such minimal fines cannot effectively prevent food safety issues. Following the exposure, stock prices of leading instant noodle enterprises Master Kong and Uni President saw a significant drop. Some netizens exclaimed, spitting and throwing cigarette butts into food is too much, while others stated, the pickled vegetable industry is ruined. These are just the tip of the iceberg concerning problems with food processing in China. Chinese people have become accustomed to such serious food safety incidents because they can simply choose not to consume the affected products. However, what is more troubling are issues related to cars and real estate. As two of China's new four great inventions, these sectors have indeed caused great distress to the general populace. First to be mentioned is China's electric vehicles, particularly the recent downfall of WM Motors, which was once among the leading electric vehicle companies in China. WM Motors, a new and emerging electric vehicle brand in China in recent years, was categorized alongside NIO, Xpeng, and Baiton as part of the four small dragons of new automakers. However, recently, a Chinese business inquiry platform showed that the company had filed for bankruptcy review. On October 10th, WM Motors also issued a notification letter informing employees, partners, and customers of the company's operational difficulties. Prior to this, the internet was awash with numerous reports of WM vehicles spontaneously combusting due to battery issues. A video also featured a car owner claiming that WM Motor, under the pretext of car maintenance, had locked the car's battery without the owner's consent, and collective rights protection by car owners had not elicited any official response. The car owner mentioned that his four-year-old Weltmeister vehicle could only be sold for just over 40,000 yuan, about 5,500 US dollars, while the official website listed Weltmeister vehicles priced at around 200,000 yuan, about 27,000 US dollars. As WM Motor files for bankruptcy, circulating online reports indicate that, in addition to owing back pay to employees, WM car owners have said that the vehicle's onboard system are crashing and unable to restart. This has left many drivers to maintain only the most basic functions to keep the car on the road. Moreover, since May this year, there have been continuous reports of WM Motor stores closing, leaving car owners with no place to go for repairs. Vehicle malfunctions have resulted in a long wait for parts and services, causing significant disruption to the businesses of many rideshare drivers who are finding it difficult to sustain their operations. Furthermore, starting from October 11th, numerous owners of WM Motors' new energy vehicles have reported on social media platforms that the official WM Motors' Weltmeister Intelligent Onboard System, the Weltmeister Companion Bluetooth Key, and remote vehicle control functions were experiencing network anomalies and were unusable. The WM Motor mobile app interface displayed a network anomaly message suggesting that the backend services had been suspended. This video shows a car owner stating that they bought their vehicle from a WM4S shop which has now closed down. 
I have an interest-free loan of 100,000 yuan, about 13,600 US dollars, from a company called WM Financial. And now I'm just a couple of payments away from finishing it. I don't know who will give back my green book, vehicle registration certificate. In addition, calls to WM Motors service hotline went unanswered and the official website experienced loading issues. Media reports reveal that WM Motors founder Freeman Shun, who was once the vice president of Geely Automobile Group, rose to prominence for leading the acquisition of Sweden's Volvo cars in 2011. A photo shows Shun attending a press conference with Geely's chairman Lee Shufu and Volvo Cars CEO Stefan Jacobi at the time. WM Motor, with shareholders including tech giants such as Baidu, Tencent Holdings, and Sequoia Capital, has conducted 12 rounds of financing totaling 41 billion yuan, approximately 5.6 billion USD, making it one of the most funded new energy vehicle startups in China, a darling of the capital market. In comparison, other well-known electric vehicle brands such as Xpeng and NIO have only raised 18.8 billion yuan, about 2.5 billion US dollars, and 15 billion yuan, about 2 billion USD, respectively. However, WM Motors' failure to specialize in technical research and development and its relentless pursuit of commercial financing left it one step short of going public. By 2021, the company was already insolvent due to a combination of factors including a sluggish capital market, significant fluctuations in raw material prices, and challenges in securing operational development funds leading to its bankruptcy filing on October 10th. WM Motors chairman Freeman Shun had once posted on Weibo that the CEO of WM Motor had left China for Munich and would later move to New York. Rumors circulated that Shun might have fled to the United States, abandoning the 40 billion yuan investment and debts, leaving employees clamoring for unpaid wages and car owners with inoperable vehicle functions and nowhere to turn. Although WM Motor officially stated on October 18th that Shun had not fled overseas but had shifted his work focus abroad, mainland media reports claimed that by the end of 2021, WM Motor had a total of 3,952 employees. However, during the bankruptcy reorganization process, only 817 employees remained, with core departments including the Wenzhou production base with 173 people, the Huanggang production base with 153 people, the Chengdu Research Institute with 43 people, the product planning and intelligent system related departments with 24 people, and the sales and user service department with 69 people. These facts make it difficult to believe that the top leaders of WM Motor has not absconded. WM Motors' withdrawal from the Chinese electric vehicle market casts a shadow of doubt over consumers and secondhand car dealers. Here in this video, a woman has just received over a hundred secondhand WM Motor EX5 series cars. With WM Motors' bankruptcy, she is compelled to sell these electric vehicles despite the circumstance, stating, given the situation now, you decide the price. However, even more distressing for the Chinese people is the property crisis. Mainland media reports that at least 5 million households have purchased off-plan apartments from Evergrande Group, only to find tens of thousands of projects abandoned, leaving innumerable families in a housing and financial crisis. In Zhengzhou alone, Evergrande's unfinished projects amount to 25,249 units, accounting for 28% of total transactions, with one in every three home buyers unable to receive their property. In Changsha, the figure reaches 28,139 units, representing 21% of the total, translating to one in four home buyers left without their homes. Guo Tianran, a pseudonym, 59, shared his plight with the media. He purchased a 126 square meter pre sale property from Evergrande in Henan early in 2021 for 820,000 yuan, approximately 112,000 USD, including a parking spot for 70,000 yuan, about 9,569 USD, totaling close to 900,000 yuan, approximately 123,000 USD. However, months after signing the contract, Evergrande's financial troubles surfaced. He said, we paid a down payment of 240,000 yuan, about 32,800 USD, and now we have to pay a monthly mortgage of 5,923 yuan. Our disposable income each month is reduced to 1,000 to 2,000 yuan, 137 to 273 USD. That isn't the issue, we can still get by. 
But the thought of investing my retirement savings and potentially paying out my salary for the next 30 years only to end up with nothing is unbearable. Buying property in China often involves investments of millions of yuan, a daunting sum for most. The late Chinese premier Li Keqiang had noted that 600 million Chinese earn a monthly income of around 1,000 yuan, 137 USD, totaling just over 12,000 yuan, about 1,600 US dollars annually. For individuals with such income, purchasing a home worth about 1 million yuan, over 100,000 US dollars, could take decades, even a century. For the average Chinese family, a home often represents a lifetime of earnings. Guo added with emotion, the thought of it brings me to tears. I feel sorry for my son, sorry for myself. What will happen to my son? How will he get married? I can't even share this with neighbors and colleagues for fear of their pity or mockery. At my age, I should not have to deal with this like this. Moreover, Evergrande's unfinished projects can be found in various major provinces and cities across China, such as Heilongjiang, Jilin, Liaoning, Anhui, Beijing, and Tianjin. The company, which has filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States, has seen its founder Xu Jiayin arrested, causing chaos and despair among the Chinese people. Due to China's unique real estate financing model, many developers receive substantial loans before a project's completion, a practice not legally sanctioned. However, due to the immense interest involved with Evergrande, many banks and officials provided shortcuts to profit from the dealings. Questions about Evergrande's massive debts were raised, as seen in another video where a man openly questioned Xu Jiayin. May I ask, where did you borrow the two trillion from? How was it borrowed? Who permitted it? Who approved it? And who personally stamped it? Xu Jiayin was unable to answer. He then asked, with 720,000 families rendered homeless, if you can't take responsibility, should not the people who permitted the loans approve them and stamp them do so? The collapse of Evergrande signifies the beginning of the end for China's property market, with millions facing homelessness, a crisis that may be just the beginning with more Evergrandes likely to follow. Thus unfolds what some may call China's new four great inventions, or rather four major crises. The uncertainty of safety in everyday products, from the beer one drinks to the noodles one eats, vehicles purchased at a premium may become worthless in a few years, and homes saved for a lifetime may turn into unfinished husks overnight. In modern China, rampant with absurdities and deceit, hardworking individuals are continuously exploited by unscrupulous businessmen in collusion with the government, seizing the hard-earned money of the people. In a world where hell is debated to exist, if it does, it is perhaps aptly represented by the current state of the Chinese property market.